So now I would like to get to Anne's comment, or one of Anne's comments, which I perhaps found the most troubling of what I read uh, today. It actually wasn't her comment. She was quoting the Maharal, and it's about Sarah's two names. So he says, a woman has two missions in life, the first from birth as an individual, and the second when she marries and is elevated to a higher joint mission with her husband. This Iska, Yiska is the name indicating her personal greatness and Sarai Sarah, the name indicating her Abrahamitic mission, used exclusively from the time of her marriage. So I had some difficulty with this concept that a woman has her individuality and her individual name, and then she has her higher, greater role in partnership with her husband, and we could extend and say presumably as a mother. It reminded me of something I read a very long time ago, back in my prior career, which I've referred to, working in the battered women's movement. One of the early books that came out about battered women and the psychology of abusive relationships quoted Eric Erickson, the developmental psychologist. And he said that women, in fact, that society expects women to leave aspects of their personality unformed so that they will be able to develop in relationship to and influenced by their husbands and children. That is that women don't undergo full individuation or personality development. Uh, that we, society really asks women to hold back in personal development in order that they will be able to be more responsive to the needs of husbands and children. Now obviously Erickson was working from a particular developmental model in which individuation is seen as a high goal. And in the portrayal of this uh, psychological research in the book about battered women, this was seen as a negative, that we ask women not to develop their personalities until they can become more fully themselves as wives and mothers and in response to and relationship with husbands and children. But of course, the model of individuation that, that probably was behind Erickson's ideas of developmental psychology was also critiqued. Um, by scholars such as Carol Gilligan, who wrote In a Different Voice. And in Jewish tradition, it seems to me, the model of individuation doesn't hold, that, that in fact, the biblical texts certainly don't know people as individuals. They know our characters only in relation. So I don't know what the answer is, but I, I, I am troubled by this notion that we, women have one purpose that's their individual purpose and their greater purpose that's only fulfilled with a husband and children. And I don't know that we ask the same thing of men. And Erickson certainly thought that we don't ask the same thing of men to leave some aspect of their personality unformed. At the same time, I do believe that Jewish tradition is basically about being in relationship. And this, perhaps, is what gives rise to the whole Sarah in a box midrash. That is, there's a verse in chapter 12 where it says Abram went down to Egypt. And yet everywhere else in text, when Abram travels, he doesn't just travel by himself. He travels with a huge retinue. And it's that saying that he went down by himself that gives rise to the whole midrash of Sarah in a box. Because the rabbis want to know where is Sarah. And they don't want her to be absent because Abraham is a person in relation to her. Okay, so finally, I want to comment on something Josh said, and he asked the question, what is more important to the rabbis? Maint resolving textual inconsistencies, and therefore maintaining the Torah's word-for-word -word perfection, or resolving in inconsistencies of moral and cultural meaning, and thereby maintaining the Torah's perfection as a guide for right living and meaning? And I think this is a brilliant, brilliant question. Uh, but we also have to realize that there's no such thing as the rabbis. When we talk about Midrash Rabbah, it's a collection, and the other Midrashim as well. We saw some Midrash also from Talmud Bavli, and we'll continue to see Midrashim from different sources. And we're talking about a vast collection of oral traditions that were recorded over a period of time. And that means that it will be difficult to find theological consistent, let's see, and even will be difficult to find methodological consistency. Um, I spoke with Rabbi Mordecai Silverstein, who teaches Midrash here, and he told me that it's easier to find some methodological consistency in Midrashim. It's much harder to find theological or ideological consistency. So we will find rabbis who are more concerned with resolving textual inconsistencies, and other rabbis who are more concerned with resolving inconsistencies of moral and spiritual meaning, and cultural meaning. 
And we, so we will find rabbis on both ends of this spectrum. There is a multiplicity of midrashic voices, and we will be hearing them as we go on with our learning. So I look forward to learning with you more in the coming week as we tackle the topic, Sarah, our mother. Thank you for being part of this class.